the Jack Black comedy band. I'm not sure if you're aware. This is touring Australia at the moment. One of the guitarists had this to say. Make a wish, Canada. Don't miss Trump next time. <laughs> Quite rightly, they've now put the uh, the tour on hold. What did you make of that? Yeah, I saw that video today. It's so disheartening uh, and disgusting, and it's part of a larger problem here in American Hollywood, uh, and, and clearly now, unfortunately, in Australia. You know, you go back to, I think it was 2017, Kathy Griffin, a really unfunny woman, she held a decapitated Donald Trump head. She held it up with a picture. Uh, Snoop Dogg put up a video basically calling for Donald Trump to be killed. Uh, now you have Jack Black laughing at someone saying that Donald Trump unfortunately survived an assassination attempt. And so when you have these people with these very large platforms making it permissible to say these horrible things and to do these grotesque photo shoots, it again sends the message that Donald Trump, you know, needs to be taken out, that that's okay. They're trying to downplay assassination attempts by, like, cushioning the blow, essentially. Brian, if you've covered Donald Trump for a long time, are you surprised at how calm he's been since this has all happened and the discipline he and his team are now showing? Donald Trump has been a very different Donald Trump than 2016 and 2020 in this election cycle, especially this past month. Since the debate, he's been relatively quiet, right? It, it, you never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. Then this assassination attempt comes, and Donald Trump's initial reaction is to let the crowd know to fight, right? It's okay to be strong. He's safe. And I think that is a, a great juxtaposition to someone like Joe Biden, right? Joe Biden goes on a few international trips because he signed up to do that job as president, and then hides in his camp, uh, Camp David, for a week, hides out of the public view. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is literally nearly assassinated. He, uh, uh, this much, he almost died. And the next day he's out golfing, and then today he's out, you know, seeing the public at the RNC convention. That's a show of unity and strength that Americans are looking for right now and that we've been sorely lacking for four years. President Biden, um, look, he's unusually been doing some one-on-one -on -one interviews. He sat down with NBC. He was asked about uh, his rhetoric uh, that you and I just spoke about. Here was his reaction. You called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. There's some dispute about the, the context, but I think you appreciate that I didn't word. I see crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Look, the truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's uh, agenda. Do you buy that? No, not at all. Look, Joe Biden... The reason he uh, won in 2020, what he campaigned on was, I'm not Donald Trump. He didn't have a, a message. He didn't have politics or policies that made sense. It was simply, I'm the lesser of two evils. And that worked in 2020. And polling now indicates that that same messaging doesn't work. People are disillusioned with Biden for the past four years, especially black voters, young black voters. And so they don't really feel that same way. And Democrats have tried to make this race a referendum once again on Donald Trump. But the reality is, after four years of Joe Biden's policies versus four years of Donald Trump, hearing, you know, threat to democracy doesn't hit the same way it did in 2020 when you realize that you'd rather someone be a fake threat to democracy because he's not and have lower gas prices than have high gas prices can't afford to eat and can barely put a roof over your head and at least have someone who you know is quiet he doesn't say things that people necessarily don't want to hear the big announcement today is obviously donald trump's running mate he has picked jd vance i don't know much about him what do you know about him J.D. Vance was a surprising pick for me. I think Donald Trump, uh, he had certainly had easier pathways to re-election. Someone like Senator Marco Rubio, uh, Governor Glenn Youngkin, they appeal to suburban college-educated voters. And that is one of the most important voting blocks for Donald Trump because he had them in 2016. He lost them a little bit in 2020, which, forced, which didn't help him get over the edge in Georgia and Pennsylvania. I don't necessarily know if Vance is going to be that person to bridge that gap. That being said, Vance appeals to Midwesterners. He appeals to middle working class Americans. And Donald Trump has now created this very geographically very ticket, right? He has the East Coast. J.D. Vance has uh, the Midwest. And so I do think J.D. Vance brings that to the table. Uh, he is someone who's been a senator for two years, so it's not a ton of experience. That being said, about 80% of people don't know who J.D. Vance is, and that is a benefit because Republicans will not have to run defense for J.D. Vance, and he'll actually have the opportunity to craft his own narrative about who he is as a senator and who he will be as the vice president.
Well, Brianna, we're in fascinating times. I really appreciate you staying up late for us. Brianna Lyman, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.